Hi, welcome to Above Deck, a Below Deck Breakdown podcast. I'm Sarah Goldman coming to you from an Airbnb in Sedona, Arizona. And with me as always is my college roommate and co-host, Kelly. I'm Kelly Busby, a former radio host and flower seed hoarder. Is it time to plant yet? I'm coming to you from my home studio in Columbus. Together, we hosted the Socks with Sandals radio show on WFAL in Bowling Green, Ohio. And we are back again this week to discuss Below Deck and our love of all things Bravo. You guys might be wondering who this is. This is another one of my old roommates. This is Kate. We were exchange students together at the College of Charleston. And so that's how we met and we traveled together on occasion hi so yeah thanks for being here pleasure i have for having me forced her to watch bravo she started watching housewives she's all in on the traders oh yeah and the season of below deck and some other seasons so yeah so we're excited you could be here with us yeah it's a pleasure so today we'll be discussing below deck season 11 episode 5 come on eileen here's your recap a new group of guests challenges the crew, and Kat's inexperience frustrates Zandy. Ben takes the guest snorkeling, and the primary only drinks out of plastic cups. Eileen gets sloppy, and Jared struggles to stay focused. Sarah and Kate, what'd you think? I love this episode. I love a sloppy guest. <laughs> I love I love guest drama more than I love crew drama. Yeah, honestly, the plastic cups gave me a lot of anxiety yeah it was really worried there's so many questions and aren't plastic cups supposed to do the opposite not give you anxiety right right right, right. 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 good point especially on a boat i don't know yeah. yeah so the episode oh you know what and a lot of glass broke on this charter for being plastic cups yeah anyway okay so the episode begins with the night out and Fraser's having that talk with Barbie at the bar, and she fully admits to being a spoiled brat. And I love when Fraser said, and good for you. Like, he wants to be a spoiled brat. <laughs> he wants to I mean, be, or, you know, just to do his hair. <laughs> but it seems like they kind of end on a good situation. Do you feel like it was lip service from her? I mean... I hope it's true. And maybe I'm just jaded and I've seen this show, you know, a few times, but yeah, I don't know. I think she likes to like start confrontation. And then when it starts to get heated, she's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just kidding. I mean, I know. I'm just Yeah. Let's just talk it out. It's fine. Yeah. She yeah. knew what she needed to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's an adult. Okay. So everyone heads back to the boat. Barbie's over her very brief crush she had on Jared. She said she felt the ick. And I felt that like it was, it came through the screen. Yeah. Big time. So hot tub time, Sonny and Ben back on straddling each other, kissing and they move it to the bunk top bunk. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, he's there. She's there. They're in Rome. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Or Grenada. (laughs) (laughs) So meanwhile, Barbie and Kyle are talking in the crew mess and she shares her love of Judaism with him. And she wants, she's been to Israel. She's been to the Wailing Wall. She wants to convert someday is kind of what it sounded like. But I think Kyle wasn't sure exactly what to say because he's like, his wheels are turning how he can get Barbie. Right. Judaism. How can I? He's trying to go this direction, and she's all about like, this is what I feel in my soul, and this is who I am, and yeah. And he's like, did I like you? I was branded with a coat hanger one time. (laughs) (laughs) So the next day, Jared goes to talk to Captain Carey, shares his struggles with not being able to talk to his daughter the night before, and Captain Carey's very kind and understanding. He really was listening to him and it was it was nice to see and and maybe Captain Carey sees a little bit of himself and like of his old self in Jared. So um yeah. it's just nice that Jared has somebody to lean on in that situation. Yeah, I love that Captain Carey worries about people's physical health and mental health. Absolutely. As we know, the highs are highs and the lows are lows on boats. So yeah. the crew gets busy turning the boat around. Ben and Sonny are keeping it professional now, and they're discussing their favorite boat cleaning products. (laughs) 
So Sarah and Kate. Oh. <laughs> so what are your favorite shampoos or your face wash or like what would we, what would, how would we even, there's no comparison there. A favorite cleaning product in my household is Comet. Get that, ah. get that stuff in the sink and look how beautiful that sink is. Scrub it with, that scrub it with. provides so much joy in my house. So <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I like Windex. It's like, yeah. it, it'll clean everything. Windex and Dawn saves the butt, yeah. the bird, the butts, saves <laughs> the ducks from the oil. That's I right. quit. I'm going home. <laughs> okay. So it's funny that you say duck because earlier I saw a deer out the window, like a big buck. And I was like, hey, uh, a duck. <laughs> <laughs> but where she lives, there are deer everywhere. So she didn't care. And I was like, get your phone. Let's take a picture. But we just looked with our eyes. Anyway. Um, okay. So Fraser has a quick chat with Captain Carey about how delicate Cat is, you know, crying every day. And he just wants him to be aware. And he also notes that he thinks Barbie's attitude is improving. This is based on the conversation the night before. And yeah. he was planning to give out stripes today. That is so exciting and very worrying all at the same time. Because he, wanna... he's going to rock the proverbial boat. Like, yes. Yeah, he is. Yes. Kate, do you want to share some of your thoughts on Fraser's management style? <laughs> <laughs> well, I completely agree with you, Kelly. This is kind of an example of uh, you're trying to be nice and uphold somebody, but uh, there's going to be some consequences here. Yeah. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. This should be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So Jared calls the provisioner a couple times. He's trying to get more towels for the boat. One, why don't they have enough towels already? Or like, yeah. what happened to some of these towels? Maybe they got stained. I don't know. Um, the second time he's on the phone with her, she tells him she does not like his tone. And for her, because he was being like, I just need towels. Like, he was being so short with her. And I'm, yeah. someone needed to tell him to check himself. But I don't know. I think, I feel like they just didn't want to do extra laundry. <laughs> that could be. That could be. So. You guys are on the same page about this because you were like, he was being a... D. Yeah. Well, he's, I didn't think it was that bad. He's really getting some life lessons here just in this episode alone. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's people true. are kind of handing it to him on a platter. Yeah. I mean, where it's really hard to get stuff on a Caribbean island. Yeah. <laughs> the provisioner's your only hope. You got to like kiss some butt, I think. Yeah. And you I know, think you're really going to get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Like, we're just going to, in this case, yellow towels. So the preference yes. meeting, we have Tina Smothers from Iowa with her husband and friends. I think one of them is also her sister. Okay. She cannot drink out of glassware. She must have plastic cups and a new one each time she gets a drink. Fraser thinks that this is psychotic. I mean, he's not wrong. I mean... <laughs> I, I want to know the backstory. There has to be some sort of backstory. So, yeah. Tina, were you cut as a child? Did you swallow some glass? Like, did it get in your mouth? I don't. Does Diet Coke just taste better in a red solo cup? I'm I'm seriously, truly curious. It's so not millennial of her, too. Oh. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. You think but it's very well? pretentious. I don't know. But what a waste. Glass. All that's going to end up yeah. in the, the landfill. Yeah. Truly. And if she has a straw, forget it. Right? Like, right. Real straw. Those poor sea turtles out there. That's right. Uh-huh. So the good news is she's really easy otherwise. No oh. beef, no po poultry, no pork, no eggs, and no tofu. So, so that leaves me, what? So for me at this point, I'm sitting here going, okay, instead of telling us what you don't like, it's going to be way easier if you just yes. tell us right up front, like, what do you want? What do yeah. you want? Yeah, because Sarah and I literally stopped the episode and looked at each other and said, okay. I was like, what does that leave? Yeah. So I think that Where leaves that fish, fish and cheese and lentils and veggies and fruit. Was chicken on that list? No poultry. Oh, <laughs> Anthony, you, you, yeah, you got Good it. Good luck, my friend. Yeah. 
So the guests want a Roaring Twenties party. This is so three years ago. We have so many of these on the housewives. Like no more Roaring Twenties parties. Oh, but we're at the Roaring Twenties, not this. I mean, and it's kind oh, of the point. same as it was back then. So, oh, what would what would this um, time period be called if that was the Roaring Twenties? These are like the the phone twenties. <laughs> I'm always wondering though, where do they get these ideas of what party they want? Is there a list? And I think so. I'm also thinking, what party would I want? Yeah, what would you That's want? a great question. What would I want? We've talked about this a few times. Yeah. I have a little fantasy. Have you heard of those shirt parties where everybody brings a shirt and you put it in a bag? And then later everybody at the party has to pick a shirt out and then wear it for the night. I think that sounds hilarious. It does sound hilarious. I'm thinking that sounds a tiny fun. little sequins shirt for some big buff man would be funny. <laughs> Crop top. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like it. So okay. fun. They also want to go snorkeling and they want beach volleyball. And you know, Fraser was thinking, I will not be participating in beach volleyball. No. And we all know why. Yes. And that's okay. <laughs> Jared has a chat with Captain again. He says, you know, I heard what you said about staying focused. You know, I'm going to keep the course. And Carrie tells him, if you can't do this job because of what's going on at home, it's okay to say that. And you, you got to be here 100%. And it's a safety issue. And Carrie re reiterates that he understands what Jared is going through. But he does let him know he knew that he was drunk, still drunk maybe hungover mm -hmm. can morning. i ask you how much i appreciate that yeah, yeah. The captain did that because this could be the beginning of not a very good path for jared yeah yeah i do hope he gets his head on straight like i i do wonder though why didn't he ask cap if he could make a phone or try and use like his wi-fi or his yeah. phone or email to just reach out to his daughter's mom to say, hey, look, here's what's going on. I'm trying, but, yeah. you know, because they showed the captain reaching his kiddos. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why, in, in the same respect, I don't know why Carrie didn't offer that. Yeah. And maybe he did and we just didn't see that. That's no. true. So Zandy's given the second stoop position and Barbie is not happy. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I know. The next Especially day. because Barbie said in her head, she's the second still. Yeah. So. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. So the guests arrive. We have a plastic glass for Tina. And you and I were worried when we saw that tray of champagne glasses. We're like, oh my God. Literally. They forgot it already. Yeah. Literally holding our breath. We're like, <gasps> did they forget it? <laughs> she was so excited. She was. Is this for me? Oh yeah. my goodness. Great. Um, Kate, what is your theory about picky eaters that you were telling me? <laughs> well, I've read somewhere the people who are picky eaters grow up to be unhappy adults. So but that's always kind of in the back of my mind. But in this scenario, I'm reading it as a control aspect. So oh, yeah. maybe some things are out of control in her life. And this is one area that she feels the flex of being able to control it. But I mean, I don't know enough about her life to fully endorse that. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes sense because we see in, in a little bit that she just breaks down and like storms off because yeah. she doesn't have control of what's going on. Yeah, so something's going on. Like you said before, there's a backstory. Yeah. Yeah. So Zandy tells Fraser that she has to redo everything that Kat does, and she is just over this. Well, uh, yeah, what's the yeah. point of having two people do the same thing? I know, but I was a little bummed that Zandy said that, because as I was watching Zandy help Kat, my heart runneth over i was like this is what cat needs she needs somebody to show compassion for her and mm -hmm. so yeah. i loved that but we yeah. are like three charters in yeah okay like are we gonna show Fair. you how to do the bed corners there a third or fourth or fifth like time? okay every time but no i mean yeah. i get it and we've said that too yeah i don't know yeah it was kind of annoying because Everybody seems to be getting along, and now Zandy has an issue. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Um, at one point, one of the guests said, 
Grenada, Grenada, potato, potato. I thought that was funny. That's all I have to say about that. Um, <laughs> I love that. Kyle grew up working on a sheep farm and he was a sprinkler fitter. And I have no idea what that is. Like repairing sprinklers. Kelly, what do you I think would, that is? I would think so, unless it's some... Maybe it's like a fire extinguisher or like a, <laughs> a, a house. Sheep farm? Oh, in the barn? <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> was he a sprinkler fitter at the barn, at the sheep farm? Yeah. Or was this a separate job? Because if it was a separate job, then maybe he was responsible for putting in, like, fire extinguishers in businesses. So my brain went completely a different direction. You can tell we're oh. from the <laughs> You guys are from the burbs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm from Timbuktu. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> what is a sprinkler fitter? Well, I don't, do you think? I don't know in Scottish culture what a sprinkler fitter is, but I do know that where I'm from, a lot of younger people, say age 12 through high school, are employed. And when I say employed, I don't mean paid. I just mean right. uh, you're going to go out there and this is what you're going to do, friend. Uh huh. And right. they have to put on their wellies. Uh-huh. Usually the wellies go all the way up to the thighs. Oh, wow. And they go out into the fields and they move pipe. And so you have to have a couple oh. people and you are in a field and you grab the pipe, you move it down, set it down, but then you have to like screw the pipes together. So I'm like, maybe that's a sprinkler fitter. I don't know. We need to find this out. That yes. sounds more logical. So it's yeah. just for crops. Yeah. Like hay fields or alfalfa or something like that. So anyways, we have got to figure this out. Kyle, how are we going to find out? Guys? Kyle will DM us. Okay. Kyle, we're waiting to hear Let from you, know. friend. I have a feeling some of our listeners will be like, I cannot believe they don't know what a spring yeah, I know. <laughs> You're going to get some flack for this one. I'm anyway. so sorry. <laughs> you learn something new every day. That's I, right. That's I right. like Kelly's day. That was particularly hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's <laughs> spot on though. I know. Okay. So at lunch, Eileen is already five drinks in. She's dropping sushi. She said she wants to wrestle her husband on the beach. Okay. Okay. I mean, depending on the husband, you never know. I mean, that could be fun. But what is happening here? Like, she was she drunk when she got on the boat? Maybe. She is ready to fight it. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> after lunch, Ben takes them snorkeling on the boats. Eileen... You know, she's got her life jacket on, whatever. She's going somewhere. And then she says, where are we going? <laughs> Why do you going, going home? You don't know where you're going. I'm on a boat. I'm wearing dippy floppies. That's right. <laughs> so she told Sunny, like, I can't swim. And I don't think, I don't know if she could swim sober, but she definitely can't swim in her current state. So right. um, this is going to be interesting. And they let her get on the boat, too. I was, that was right nervous. that made me nervous but they yeah. seem to have picked a really great spot and they're having a really good time so yeah it's beautiful the reef was pretty there's a little wreck i mean it was really nice um yeah. back to the boat can we talk about tina's outfit okay it was a swimsuit with faces on it maybe her husband's face did you notice this kate pointed it out i i clearly missed this part i'm gonna have to go back yeah you're going to what was i doing okay but come on now this is not the real issue <laughs> Sarah. yeah i am so confused yeah you have to have a fresh glass every time you get a drink but you'll wear jorts <laughs> what in the what what in the jorts I are we talking about I feel here like jorts are okay no for they're girls, not but not boys uh, no not if you're on a yacht frazier please when can we put these to bed um, are you on okay this friend? on a super yacht frazier <laughs> okay to me the bigger problem is the plastic hat with hearts on it it had like a phone cord cord securing it in the back you know what I'm talking about? It's what your kid made you for Michael's for Christmas. Yeah. 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 Looked like a bat mitzvah party favor from 1993. When you say that, like, you know. Was yeah. This, was yeah. This, uh, I, was, I was doing the bar and bat mitzvah circuit okay. in 1993. 
I did also have visors that I puppy painted like Sarah's bought mitzvah. Nice. Hey, whatever, 1993. Um, but they didn't have the foam for it. I think mine might be a little classier than hers. I don't know. I'm just saying. Oh, <laughs> she's putting it down. <laughs> anyway, okay. So we should put up a screenshot of what she was wearing. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to need to go back and check this out. So before dinner, there's a crash. Breaking glass coming from Eileen's room. Oh, no. So we're not surprised because Eileen. A glass panel in the bathroom door fell and broke all over the place. And they call the engineer, I guess, to come deal with it. So Mike is, it, he's locked in the bathroom, like cannot get out. And there's, <laughs> like, thankfully, it doesn't look like the glass broke, but it it's like little squares of it everywhere. But so there's, Eileen comes upstairs. There's a real problem. I need help. And, and Kat's like, I don't know. And so she runs uh-huh. down there. And she's like, and Eileen, so I was sleeping. And I'm like, I call shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. Did she walk into the door? Like, what happened? And her first thing, I was sleeping. The least just want to put that out there. Insane, though. We were like, oh, what happened? Yeah. Okay. So meanwhile, everyone else is setting up for this. Monte Carlo party, which I guess is what Fraser's calling the Roaring Twenties party because Roaring Twenties overdone. Okay, um, everyone looks great. Yeah, and Fraser's vest was amazing. <laughs> um, I will say it was very National Lampoon's Vegas vacation, but I yeah. loved it. Yeah, we have lobster and fillet for dinner, cold lobster for Tina, but not raw. Okay, dessert. Which is on- yeah dessert arrives and eileen and tina get into it about not waiting to eat until everybody's served um tina leaves the table in tears yeah is the backstory i don't i don't know and and there's definitely something more brewing there and eileen's husband who is mike is tina's business partner so i'm wondering if that had something to do with it because he wasn't like sticking up for her or Whoever said that the um that her exit from the table was a seven, that she could have been a little bit more dramatic, uh, may have something to do with it too. <laughs> Appreciate that sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Eileen told Jared, it's a good thing you're good looking because you've got nothing else going on for you. Seriously. What? Why uh, would you say something like that to a stranger, someone you don't know? Even so, when you do know, why would you say that? That is a low blow. Come on. Yeah. So that was crazy. She is an unhappy person. Obviously. Yeah. So the guests are in the hot tub. They're being so rude to Barbie. They're like, every time you come up here, you better have a drink for everybody. Just yeah. rude. Yeah. Eileen falls getting out of the hot tub. Oh, my goodness. And she cracks her head right on the side of the hot tub. And Barbie has to walk her down the stairs to her room. So at one point I thought, ouch, that has to hurt. And then at the other point I thought, karma, don't ever be mean to the crew. Like, yeah. So I feel like that was the universe smacking her back in the face. I so. do like how Barbie handled that. Yeah. She did a beautiful job there. Yeah. Down the stairs. Hey, and hey, being let's nice. go. I'm just going to walk with you. You're yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it was good. Eileen's like, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> good. <laughs> well i'm just gonna help you so yeah. jared is upset about what eileen said and also yeah. not being able to talk to his daughter and he's just not doing well yeah it's all kind of compounding and i'm worried about him um and the preview for next week does not show his mental health getting any better it Aww. just doesn't look good I'm and i think we're gonna see a side of captain carrie we do not want to see ever again yeah oh I wonder if Jared is going to just leave on his own accord or I think he's going to make a mistake and be out of there. I hope that he just makes a decision to go. Yeah. Or maybe he'll figure it out. That's very optimistic, but it could be. Okay. Yeah. I mean, best case scenario. We'll see. All right. Now it's time for our segment. Chief Steward Fraser presents fun with phrases. Okay, which of these Fraser codes was your favorite? This is for you two. Oh, okay. Guess who's your mummy? Two, it's stupid and psychotic to be asking for plastic every single drink. 
Three, she's got a lot of problems, this woman. Come on, babe, enjoy life, have an egg. Four, it doesn't look like Tina likes anything at all. She doesn't like smiling. I will do my best to deal with it. Which one was your favorite? Um, I really like number three. She's got a lot of problems, this woman. Come on, babe. Enjoy life. Have an egg. It's pretty simple, but fun. Yeah. So at some point during the episode, I decided that I was going to make a tally of any time Tina smiled because I'm like, you have one epic RBF there, honey. Yeah. So yeah. in that tally, how many times do you think I tallied it? How many times she smiled? I mean, she's on a Maybe two. Grimada. Maybe two. What do you think? I thought it'd be a handful. I mean, she's on a super yacht with her friends. One time, friends. <laughs> One time. At any <laughs> at any rate, Fraser, I'm with you on the egg thing. I'm going egg. That's the quote. Yeah, that's a good one. It's time for Hot Tub Convo, where we discuss what's happening with our favorite Below Deck cast flowers. Sarah and Kate, guess what? what? Chase and the crew of sailing yacht Grace finally left for the Bahamas last week. Finally, about a month. So when are we going? I mean, we were invited at least yeah. twice. So we yeah. need to, I think they're going to go drop off relief supplies on Abaco. Yeah. And then I think they're maybe going to Nassau. And then they're going to be in the Exumas. And that's where they're going to party it up. So that's where the, the pigs are, right? That's where the swimming pigs are. That's where the like nurse sharks are that you can pet and stuff. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if we can make it happen. Hopefully he'll, he'll get a ladder so we can get on this boat a little easier. <laughs> Wait. Sweet baby Jesus. Oh, not Ek and Sue. Not Ek and Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to get the traders. Okay, so <laughs> Barbie and Jared were on Watch What Happens Live last week. They both looked great. Barbie has blonde highlights right now. And she was oh, fun fishnet tights with rhinestones on them. And then her dress had these white roses, like, right on the wrist. It was very cool. And, Cute. Um, Jared said he still hasn't met his daughter in person, so that's sad. And he said yeah. it's a tricky situation because his ex is now with another person, and they don't want to make the relationship confusing for the daughter. And that's very awkward. I get it. It's, Just, it is That is super awkward, but I, I appreciate that he's focusing on the kiddo. Can and how it's handle, going to affect yeah they can handle they it. can handle more than you think yeah yeah so, and the most successful adoptions are open adoptions so okay. go for it jared yeah keep keep on keeping on yeah and i hope that his ex i don't know makes comes it, around makes it easier for him to be a part of her life yeah absolutely so, barbie called jared out on comparing her to bacteria in that episode from a couple weeks ago Oh my gosh. Um, and then he said on Watch Hams Live, he said, Well, there is good bacteria. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um oh my word. Andy asked who they would never work with again. And Barbie said cat. And oh. Jared said Ben. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, they did have some conflicts at the beginning, but it seems like they're working together pretty well. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, Andy was so tickled by everything Barbie said and oh. He even asked her if she wanted to be a housewife, like if she'd ever considered it. And she was like, I would love it. It's my dream. She's a huge housewives fan. Um, okay. By the way, if we have her on the podcast, we need to talk housewives with her, obviously, because she is really into Yeah. So is this housewives of Argentina? <laughs> you're talking about <laughs> closing a new housewives franchise. Like a, well, I don't know. Location. Hey. Okay. That's so it. remember last week when we talked about Captain Dreamboat's baby mullet, and I just love the fact that we're calling it a baby mullet. Yeah. Um, I said he was. I thought he was inspired by Kyle from Summer House, and we had a listener comment this week at Nutmeg House Bear writes. Obviously, Captain Cutie was inspired by Keith Stone for the mullet, and yes, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. I don't know why we didn't think of that. I don't know. So funny. Good comment. Um. <laughs> Joao was on the podcast Side Piece Show with Melissa Feaster. This yeah. is also part of Heard at Media. We met Melissa at BravoCon. And yeah. it turns out she moderated the Below Deck panel at the very first BravoCon in 2019. Which oh, wow. Yeah. 
Um, I know that she loves Below Deck, so that's cool. I haven't yeah. listened to the whole interview yet, just clips, but as big Zarina fans, I'm just excited to kind of hear what he has to say about that situation and just in general about his experience on Below Deck. So anyway, give that a listen. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, now it's time to talk about the traitors. <laughs> Okay, so when the episode starts out, we find out who MJ voted for. She voted for Peter, a faithful. Yes. And the faithfuls think there are two traitors left. And they are Chris. Such a dramatic reveal. Mm -hmm. And her tiny little handwriting. Oh my gosh, it was great. And Valerie's like, why did she write so small? I said, because you can't, people could tell what you're writing. You have to be like strategic oh, in this, kid. I didn't even um, that. I would expect nothing less, though, from the with the level of dramatics from this group. It was amazing. For sure. So CT said that he hopes he's in as good a shape as John at his age. Yeah. And MJ said people in England probably don't get Botox, so he may not be as old as they think. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, could you imagine John getting Botox? No. <laughs> But I'm sad he's gone. Start with his turkey teeth first. <laughs> Sorry, John. So the fashions are getting worse, right? Where are their stylists? More berets. We had hooker boots, pirate shirts at the round table. I think. I'm yeah, glad you said something because Michelle's cool outfit was horrid. Like this was my least favorite of her. And she was wearing like leather pants that were too big. I don't. I yeah. don't know. Did I not like it. Out of outfits, right? Yeah. I think well, yeah. So they didn't expect to be here this long. And maybe they're doing the best that they can with what they've got. And you know what? Right. All I ever do. What did you guys think about the mission that they did? The challenge? This was my favorite mission. Oh, really? Okay. It was so fun. And I think it was because they were all trying so hard, just so hard. And everyone was biffing so bad and they were laughing so hard and even alan was laughing and i just love it when like the host loses it and is like <laughs> having fun with them too so i yeah. thought it was fun they got a lot more money than i thought they were gonna get yeah i like their determination in the end yeah, yeah. He, chastain was a good sport so. oh yeah <laughs> so at the round table everyone votes for phaedra i think this was great yep. including kate I do think yes. that Kate said a little too much at the round table and yes. afterwards she was working too hard to get people to think that Sandra is a traitor and that's not how she's played the game up till now. So yeah. I think people are getting suspicious. Yeah. Um, who do we think Kate will murder next? Uh, like what's the most strategic move? I think it's going to be Trishel. Um, I don't think they'll get rid of CT because he has the gaming experience. I think Trishel is too noisy for mm -hmm. people. Like she just is constantly like overthinking and over talking everything. Mm -hmm. um, I think she's going to be let go. Do you think Kate's going to be successful in convincing people that Sandra's the, tr I mean, people. Yeah. Other people have said like, Ooh, it could be Sandra. So I think she's going to let Sandra go and people are going to start mm. thinking Trishel's the traitor. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah. Oh, we got I want to watch this. I want to watch it. Let's go. I know. It's Sunday. We have a few more days till Trader's okay. Day. So I have a correction from oh. last week or the week before. So Captain Carrie yeah. messaged us last week to say this. Good day. Another great podcast. Love the energy. Yes, you met my incredible lady at BravoCon. Glenn's lady is from the Dominican Republic. Remember I said I thought maybe she was also from Turkey. Not the case. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Glenn's girlfriend wasn't at BravoCon. So that was Captain okay. Kate's girlfriend. Yay. So that's who we um, saw when we went to that little side stage and she was like, mm -hmm. I'm up on the stage. Okay. Um, Love it. Kelly, I am just curious now that you've spent a half hour or so with Kate, do you have an idea about what her color aura is? Yellow. Oh. I was going to say it's yellow. What does Kirk think? Yellow. <gasps> That's cool. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Wow. 
that's cool. Well, that was kind of fun and unexpected, yeah. but yeah, no, really, like I've always thought, yeah, no, yeah, definitely yellow. Oh, that's so cool. We're yellow and orange. We're sunset colors. Oh, yeah. That's right. Aww. Do you know what yours is, Kelly? Like, can you know someone else would have to read it? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. You should come to Sedona because <laughs> somebody here could hand you a crystal and tell you what <laughs> color. It is so I love dippy here. Oh, okay. I'm coming. Next time you go, I'm there. We're going. Bring a lot of sunscreen, hat, sun protective clothing. It's like just. I'll yeah. walk around with one of those really big hats, the real floppy ones. Carry a parasol. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Let's that's what I'll definitely do. Hundred years. Well, it's time for our segment, Join Me in the Wheelhouse, where we decide who needs to see Captain Carrie for a stern talking to. So who do you think we should choose this week? I didn't think this through. Who do you think? Like, who, who needs, needs a stern talking to? Yeah, who well, behaves badly? I mean, well, out of the guests... <laughs> Eileen, Eileen and Tina. Not Mess Express. <laughs> what about from the crew, though? I mean, that's kind of obvious. Isn't it? Isn't it? Who is it? I mean, Jared? Yeah, I guess so. We call him several times now, so maybe I'm trying to spread the wealth. <laughs> <But> <laughs> oh, poor guy. <laughs> that's okay. You know what? Everybody needs a leader. Everybody needs a mentor. And, yeah. you know, Carrie comes from a place of love he's never yeah. calling people out just to be a jerk he's just kind of like hey yeah this is what's going on here let's straighten it up because i expect a little more from you so okay anyways i don't know let's go with eileen and tina okay that's all all right get up here <laughs> girls we gotta bandage your head eileen <laughs> Well, that's it for this week's episode of Above Deck. Thank you to our team at Herd at Media, especially Grace, Pat, and Danielle, and a special shout out to the social media team who has really been killing it. I'm loving all the clips on Instagram, Twitter, or whatever. Um, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to tell a friend. Please rate and review us five stars only. Kate, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. It was a blast. You can also follow us on Instagram at Above Deck Pod and email us at AboveDeckPod at gmail.com. Don't forget, you can watch us on the Herd at Media YouTube channel. And until next week, I'm Kelly Busby. And I'm Sarah Goldman. See you next week. Ciao. Bye. Cool, man. That was fun. Yes. Thanks for joining us. That was super fun. Yeah. Hey, that's fun. I'm a little scared, though. Why? Why? How, calling people out on bad outfits? <laughs> anyway, I mean, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> A style maven? <laughs> <laughs>